Hello everybody, well, hello everybody Nigel here. Um, this is a build and this is a full build of this um, Rayfield Models kit number 5028 and it's the M4A3E8 Easy 8 Sherman and basically this build is going to take you right from the beginning right to the very end but before paint or anything. So here it is, this is the finished article, well not the finished article but the built article just gently all placed together and clipped together and everything. So we can see there that we've got the uh, the lovely flexible tracks. You'll see there. And if you look, I've done a video on building them. Um, we've got some photo etch parts on the front there. There's photo etch parts all over this model actually. And um, yeah, you can see it's all in tan plastic. There's no flexible track link option or anything. You do get an option to have the dust cover on the mantle or not. Um, you get the option for the gun barrel without the handle on the bottom. You also get the option to have the ammo box up here without the um, without the bullets. I've gone for the one with the bullets on. So you could move the gun as well. That's all positionable and rotates and everything. I've drawn a hole in the mask there so when it's all painted and whether I can put an aerial in there. And um, yeah, you get options to have this uh, door open on the back with some jerry cans on there. You get options to have the exhaust deflectors up. I've got them in the down position because if they're up you're just left with a gaping hole underneath which is an omission from um, from Rayfield I think and um, yeah so without further ado let's get to the bench and see how it all goes together. I think it's lovely I've done a review of it and I've also now done the tracks and there we go as you can see tracks are all built hundreds and hundreds of parts they are extremely flexible. You can see there I can twist them like that. They would be wonderful, um, you know, on a, on, a, on a German tank where you actually want the sag across the wheels and stuff because they just sag so naturally. They are lovely, um, but they're a bit of a pig to put together. But they are look, they do look really, really nice. I mean, you can see, if you look here closely at the ends, you can see the detail on them. And you've got the you know the hollow horns with the bolt detail in them and everything and there's bolt detail on the side of those pin carriers there they're really really nice um someone did say they're weak and they fall apart i haven't had one single link come apart i've pulled them and messed around with them so uh, yeah really really chuffed um it's just a shame really that it's a sherman with live tracks because there's they're going to be pulled taut anyway you're not going to use any of that lovely sag so what i'm going to do is put those to one side and have a look at the instructions now if you remember from my review um, I did mention that oh one more thing before I start I've had a few emails people asking me questions about this I talked about this thing this is this little electric little battery rechargeable drill thing I got on Amazon um, Jinor cordless mini grinder there's the part number there TPK P2 PT014 and there's small QOM DC3R so there you go. People have been asking questions about it. As I say, I got it on Amazon. Um, I think it was seventeen ninety nine UK or or nineteen ninety nine. But anyway, back to the kit. Very very weird construction. I mean, you straight away you get you, you're starting off on step one and you, you're adding tiny little parts, photo etch parts and handles and everything to the top of the turret, and then you go and add some more here, some more here, and then you're going to add your your mantlet and everything. And then you're going to add the bottom of the turret. It just seems crazy to me. So I'm going to scrub all that. And I'm going to start. As convention would have it. I'm going to see so you doing the same here. You're adding all the tiny details to the top of the turret hull before you actually put the hull together. I'm going to start here. Halfway through step 16. So um, I'll get the parts off the sprue. Do some uh, clean up and everything. And then we'll see how it all fits together. Okay, so that's all parts off the sprue. So ready to do this assembly stage here now. Um, I'm not going to be putting the wheels on because I want to paint them off the model. I will paint the wheels and then paint the uh, paint the tyres separately on a cocktail stick rather than have to do it on here. So I won't be actually gluing any wheels on at all. So this will be, as I say, a video of a complete build. At the end of it, hopefully we'll see the tank all put together, mocked up, and then I'll take it all apart again to paint it. So, um let's see how these bits go together so this is e26 so we're going to fit this small part here you can see you've got a large hole and a small hole 
So that's just going to go like that in there. And I'm going to hold that in place and then just a dab of extra thin. And it's quite nice to be back doing AFV because you just build it and then paint it. There's no messing around with tiny details. Um, and also you don't have to be so careful with the uh, glue and everything. I know some aircraft modelers tend to um, tend to talk about military modelers and sort of simplify things and stuff, but uh, I don't agree. There are different skill sets required for for the builds, and certainly some of the uh, military models I've seen, particularly in dioramas, where you know they're um, they're weathered and stuff. It's just incredible. But then, having said that, I've seen some model aircraft before, like our, a model I will never forget. I saw a 24th scale Harrier, which had been super detailed, uh, and that was absolutely stunning. So, yeah, different skill sets. So I'm going to get this all together. I'll just do one side on camera. Remember when you're building this model, guys, it's funny how the, the glue kind of makes this plastic turn white momentarily. Um, yeah, if you are building this model, a lot of this is visible. It's not like you're your king tigers or your panthers where it's all hidden this is all quite open particularly if you don't go overboard with the mud and the weathering and everything these plates here i was going to leave till the end but it doesn't seem to that as anything goes on them so i'm just going to fit them they've got this little location tab on here and then there's a hole in here but as you can see it's not really a very positive fit it's kind of all a bit all a bit wonky so I'm guessing it's just got to be square in fact I am going to leave those off I think because I want to make sure that I get this uh, right so I'm going to get these um these mountings on here and then we'll uh, move forward just a little tip guys I talked about in a previous video you may have noticed just now I was using this and that confounded white ceiling ring fell out the cap as it always does what I do to stop that happening grab a pair of needle nose pliers and go in here and you, you've got that ring in there that the, the the seal sits around if you just go in there and just grab it and twist it in about eight places then that what that does it kind of if you can see that I'll check it's focusing you can see you deform that ring is in the middle and it actually holds it on and it'll never come out again so it's a little tip for you there so that's something I tried out myself a few weeks ago and it and it works um, these parts here as I was saying just now they've got a really really poor location you've got this tiny little pin here that's going into this into this slot so when it goes on it's got quite a lot of play <clears throat> and you've got that little tiny pin on there that goes into that great big hole so I've looked at this um, color call out and you can see that it's actually square so what I'm gonna do is fit it on so that's the wrong one that's the right one so I'm just going to put some glue in the area and I'm going to put it on like so and then I've got my square block here and I can just square it up like so and I'll do the same on the other one some glue in the area drop it on make sure that pin's central in the hole and then just square it up on that block like so so that's that step done Right, moving on to the next bit now, and we're doing the uh, rear bulkhead of the tank. And basically, what they're saying here is to put this rear door on, fit this handle, and then you've got this piece of photo etched brass inside, which is obviously some sort of deflector or something. Um, 
absolutely no point whatsoever in fitting that piece of photo etch because you're not going to see inside so I'm just going to put this door on and then with it held in place I'm going to put a couple of drops tammy extra thin on just enough to hold it in and there we go that's it and make sure the door is square okay that's that's that now I don't want to use these plastic handles because the sprue connection point is on the back of the handle there and also they've got a mold seam all around them so I've bent up a little piece of brass and it's a 0.5 diameter brass rod and it's roughly two and a half mil in between uh, the bends so that'll just go in like that I've drilled through there as well with a 0.5 drill so I'll just push that in make sure it's all nice and level and everything and then we can take a drop of super glue just drop that in behind like so and that's that in place nice and strong what you can actually do is put some super glue on the outside because these things would have been welded on anyway so you don't have to worry about having a, a raised area of glue there and there we go and that is a lot nicer a lot stronger and uh, will look much better when it's all painted and weathered and stuff you haven't got that dafty mold seam to get rid of either so I should probably do that with most of the handles on here because it just makes life a lot easier and for some reason that door is lifted that's fine there we go right so there's the deck stage done that's the little um pintle on the back and you can see it's got these three little tiny photo etch parts i'll try and get the camera to focus i don't think it will because it's too tiny let's have a look there we go you can see that they've got those two little flanges and then there's that little sort of triangular shape piece in there i haven't glued that i've left that pivoting don't know what it is if anyone could tell me what that is i'd be grateful <laughs> i'd love to know but um yeah, it's just like a little door that sits next to the uh, sits next to the um, next to the pintle there. There you go. You can see I've got it now hinged the other way. Okay, so um, that's a bit fiddly. I'm not going to be putting that on at the moment, so I'll leave that to one side. Now, going over the page, now we're looking at the actual main hull assembly. So the fit of this is just gorgeous. Look at this. I fit that on there dry fit it like that look absolutely stunning really really nice so what I'm going to do is just start by putting some quick setting on here and then put this on like so that should be enough just to sort of tack it in place and then I can put this down and use a steel block and just make sure everything's nice and square Make sure the steel block's not on the. Okay, so now that's done. I'm going to put another drop of the quick setting in here. And then another drop in here. Okay, so that's that kind of tacked together and now we could use the square block and just make sure everything's nice and square and then I'm just going to run a bead down here like so I'm not going to squeeze anything at all I don't want glues in everywhere 
you can see what a lovely joint and they thoughtfully put the location blocks where the bogies go so the actual seam here is uh, is, is is beautiful um, now I'm gonna fit the the rear bulkhead in here because it looks like Okay, I won't put the bulkhead in yet. It looked a little bit like the floor may need to come down a touch. We shall see. So let's get this other side on quick before anything starts to set. Totally all three of those. And if you can hear some noises in the background, it's my chair squeaking. It's nothing else. It's not that noise there it's the chair it's not me uh, farting is the word I'm looking for still block it there get it all squared up like so that's all lovely that middle one hasn't taken Nor is that one. It's quite a warm day today, so everything's just drying really fast. And then I'm just going to run some glue down in there there we go and then what I think I'll do is put this rear bulkhead on Easier said than done. There we go. Okay, so that fits on there like that. The the bits at the top hold the the sides at the right distance apart. Yeah. Darren said this kit was like a Tamiya fit. And by god he was right. It's really, really nice. Look at that, that, that joint there is practically invisible. This side isn't quite so good, but I mean it's it's still bloody good. Okay, that floor wants to come down a touch on this side. And then we can glue that to the rear bulkhead. We can also glue down there. And there we go, guys. Now this part here, this is going to go like so in there. He says. Just going to put a drop of glue on there, drop of glue on there, job done. Just hold those together while the glue dries. And you'll probably notice I'm using the quick setting purely for speed, no other reason whatsoever. There we go. Now you can see what's happened here. I squeeze that together 
and it's all oozed out so I can take some ordinary Tamiya Extra Thin and just brush over that and it will blend it all in luckily it's in a hardly visible spot so there we go that's the main hull built looks easy as that really really nice nice kit it looks like the the front of the hull is tapered in now but no doubt will we fit the gearbox and stuff that will sort itself out look at that that block is just too wide it's a shame <coughs> Pressing ahead now, um, moved for. I haven't bothered putting the exhaust and stuff on, or especially that little toe in, uh, the little pintle, because it'll just get broken off. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, moving ahead, I've uh, gone on and built up the gearbox cover at the front, which is beautifully detailed. We've got this lovely um, bolt flange here, which is a separate part, and you've got another one underneath, which again is a separate part. Haven't glued the middle because I want it to be able to fit both the, the whole top and bottom. Um, and just check that everything's all nice and square and it all fits nicely and you can see there we've got bolt detail on the inside again it's, this is definitely going to be coming out as a interior kit so I'm not going to glue that on yet because I want to make sure I get the upper hole to fit that properly so now I've got a dart back through the instructions and start on the upper hull now first thing it tells us here is we have to drill a couple of holes so I'll get the hull out of its bag, wrinkle, 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 noise, 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 there we go, that's that gone. So we've got the hull here, now do we have any sprue connection points to remove? I don't believe we do. So where is the sprue tab on this then? A little bit of cleanup required on there. I'm looking for a sprue connection point. I can't even see an injection an injection point on here. How strange. Very strange. Okay. So anyway, it's telling me I've got to drill a hole, so I'll get my drills ready and we'll drill some holes. Right, holes drilled in the front there, 2.8 holes. Um, two off, sorry, four off. 0.8 millimeter holes and uh, so now moving on through the instructions we've got this interior uh, plate to go on here um, you've got all this detail here for the hatches and the periscopes and stuff I'm not going to worry about all this detail here yet I don't think I need to um, these would be nice to keep in the spares box and absolutely pointless to put in this is going to be all closed up this model so um, no point in adding any interior detail um, be good to keep those as spares when I do build an interior one uh, so fitting this and I've noticed there are some ejector pin marks which are raised in here they're kind of oval in, well they they're round but they appear oval in shape because of the angle so we need to make sure that we get rid of them um, and make sure this panel is nice and flat because I think this is going to affect the way that everything else fits in so um, there's also ejector pin marks on the back of here so it's worth sanding them out and making sure they're nice and flat so I'm just going to put this in place like so and then put some clamps on it. These are my reverse pegs and then one in the middle and I can see that it's all down and everything's nice and square so I can just take some extra thin and run that in the corners just to sort of hold it in place and I'll just put a drop in the middle there and that will do put some down the sides perhaps there we go now I want to make sure that basically this all fits together nicely so and we can see here we've got this lovely bolt hole area there I mean it looks like Ryfield are going to bring out one of these one of these kits and you're going to be able to completely have it stripped it might be actually quite nice to do a modern restoration diorama that would be good with a you know a Ford F350 part outside or something but um 
So there we go. Now, as I said, I'm not going to worry about these detail parts at the moment. Those periscopes do need to go in. They can go in in a minute. I'll leave them for now. Um, I'll put them there with the other parts. Now, moving around now, we're going to move on to here. And we've got basically this um, these mudguard parts going on. I'm not exactly sure what E38 is. But... Uh, Here they are here so it's telling me to use e38 which is here uh, we've got e43 which is here and then we've got e10 which is this one Is she going to keep barking? No. She's obviously seen a, a bird in the garden or something. So there we go. I could give that a clean up. And there we go. So I'll give these a sand, I give them a clean up and then we'll get them fitted on. Okay, so all those are cut off now. I've built up these little front fender pieces, which are basically shown on the instructions here. And they are gorgeous. You've got the external bulk detail on there and then you've got the internal there as well. So absolutely stunning. Um, I don't think those ejector pin marks are going to be seen. If they are, I'll do something about them in fact. What I can probably do is just get in there now and just sand them out. But you don't need to watch me doing that, do you? So, um, <clears throat> right, these inner sponson pieces, I've put the periscopes in as well now. They go in very nice tight fit and there's a little tiny little plastic block that goes into that little step at the back. I don't know if you can see that on there. But uh, yeah, really, really nice. Um, so this part here, this is E E43. You see it's even got the, the little hatch detail on there, which is nice. And that's going to fit in there like so. So it's not a very positive location. So what I'm going to do is start by just putting a drop of extra thin quick setting in these three areas here. And then I can come along and just drop this in and hopefully that'll be enough just to tack it in place like so and it is and once again the fit is tremendous there's a word I haven't used for a long time tremendous so I'll just put some of the didn't have any on the brush then let's get some of that in there let that get in there and do its work. And then again here. And the same up here. Being careful not to uh, get any glue on the outside of the hole. Don't want to ruin that beautiful hot rolled finish. There we go, that's that on there like that. And then this outer one, this has even less to fit it. So you've got this tiny little flange in here. Wow. And that's just going to fit on there like that, I guess. Wow. You've got a tiny little flange in here, you can see that there, and then you've got these two little locating pegs, one each end, so that's got hardly any location whatsoever. 
Now, do I need to fill that seam there before I fit this? Because this sits on top. Yeah, I think I will. I think I'll do with that seam before I do any work on anything else. I just want to make sure, tweezers, make sure this is sitting flush with the bottom edge of the hull so that it's got no step there going across. Still trying to pull itself down. That quick setting dries so fast, it's incredible. I think the answer there is to put some more on. Hopefully that will go in and dissolve what's already there. Just want to make sure that that has no step there and because when you sand it if you end up with this being all irregular when you put these outer fenders on they'll be all irregular as well so you want to do your best to get that as flush as you can with that edge so i'll go on and stick the other one on get some mr servicer in there and then i'll be back right pushing on through um got mr servicer in there now ready to rub down i've also put some mr servicer in these ejector pin marks and around the sides of the hull and there's also a couple of ejector pin marks in there I'm not sure if they're going to be visible, but I thought brushes out may as well uh, may as well do it. So I, I have to put some more in there. I think. Um, I forgot to mention as well. I built these uh, front drive units up. They really have gone to time with this. You've got the complete interior detail and everything on the actual drive flange itself, and then you've got this this hub, and then you've got this part here that pushes in. This is the actual um, half shaft, I guess, and that actually sits in a poly cap inside there. So yeah, they, they really have gone to time with this and like I say, you could build a beautiful stripped down diorama. So what I was thinking while the Mr. Service is going off, let's start having a look at the turret. Now, I did mention earlier, they suggested the instructions you go through and put all this stuff on. Um, no way. Uh, I, I want to get that seam dealt with first. So what I want to do is actually get straight to this and get the whole, the, the, whole, the, the turret put together uh, and then I can work on that seam. Um, I've been uh, informed by you guys, thank you very much, that apparently there, there is a uh, casting seam there which was then subsequently ground down. So I was told to go and look at some Shermans and I can see that some look like they've you know, been beautifully done and dressed lovely and others look like somebody's done it with a, with a chainsaw. So um, I'm going to just go for the sort of medium look, I think. There's also a, uh, a mould seam on the here, on the rear of the turret. You can see where it's shiny. What I did, I didn't sand it because I didn't want to get rid of the cast texture. I scraped it, keeping the knife, I'll show you the inside here. If you keep the knife straight, it chatters. And it will run up and down over, any, over that cast, fixture, uh, cast finish and remove the, the, the mould seam. And then just brush some tabby extra thin over it. And you've kept your, you've kept your mold um, here cast finish, but you've got rid of the mold seam. So uh, there's a little piece of advice for the newbies out there. Um, so what I'm going to do is start here. I'm not going to add any, any fancy detail. Uh, in fact, what I'd better do is put... Do I need to fit that in there? I don't think I do. So I'm telling you to put C39 on the outside there or C39 on the inside there, I'll, I'll leave that. Um, so I want to build up the, the mantlet first. So we've got these two little poly caps here that go in, I guess this is, can go either way up. What they're saying here is... It's that way round there. 
very strange. Okay, so that only fits one way. Right, that's okay then. So these go in into here with the flange facing outwards. So I've got my tweezers. And just slot them into there, I guess. And then the same here. And then this is going to fit on like so. And pinch down on those little poly caps. So I'm going to use some quick setting purely for speed. Actually, something's not right here because the other side is sitting down lovely and flush, and this side isn't. That poly cap is out too much. Ah, because I've got it. It's like we say in modeling, guys, with these modern kits, generally, if something doesn't go together, particularly Tamiya. If it doesn't go together, you've got something wrong. So it's always worth looking. Looking at your instructions again. Go back, look at what you've done, look for ejector pin marks, look for sprue nibs. And I'm going to have to clamp that, hold it in place. Well, that glue goes off, which won't take long at all. Uh, so we've got this periscope which is going to go in, so this is number T7 and it's going to be the same system as the other side I guess. <coughs> no it's not. So we've got to look at the shape of it and that goes up and it's facing forward. No it's facing back. No it's facing forward. <laughs> okay, uh, so it's going to go in like so and just sit in there like that and also before I do any painting guys I'd like some advice please uh, these periscopes would they have been like that dark green glass color or would they have just been clear I mean I'm going to paint the outside of the periscope black before I put the olive drab on but I'm just wondering should the glass be green or is it just clear? Okay, let's have a look at this bit down here. So we've got to add these two little parts, C23. And they're just going to fit in there like so. Get a tiny drop of glue on them. One. Like that and then you got this part here C20 which is gonna fit in there like that now, I'm not sure if any of this is really necessary it may just be for all interior detail but we'll put it in anyway Oh, and one other thing, guys, those parts inside the hull, you do need them because they form the, the hull part of the hinge for the, uh, for the front hatches. So um, you do have to put those in. I didn't bother with the photo etch bracket or anything. So that's all done now. So that's all ready to go together. Now, it does actually look like we can fit them out after. We don't have to put it in. Yeah, we can fit them out after it's all glued together so we don't need to actually put that in so we'll get those clamps back on and let that glue go off now 
this fits together like so. There we go. Let's get some glue in there to hold that. Oops. Okay, and then that fit around the back there is gorgeous. To pull that forward a touch. Okay, that's going to have to be clamped. Now I'm not sure if a closed peg is. Yes, it is. So it's got a closed peg on there. We'll get a closed peg on there, and that closes everything up beautifully. And then what I can do is just get my glue and go around the inside. Just touch that in there and let it get into the joint. I have to use a paintbrush now. Plenty in there, make sure we get a nice strong solid joint. Anything cracking. <clears throat> and there we go. And as I've said so many more times before guys, if you are doing joints like this, it's best to clamp them and then glue them and then you don't get all the glue oozing out everywhere. Okay, so that's that done. Okay, Mr. Servicer is dry now, I've managed to sand all that out so that's all nice. You can see how good that seam is there, there's hardly anything left of it. I've gone along the uh, bottom of the fenders, I've glued these outer fenders on and their little supports. You didn't want to watch me doing that. Um, so yeah, one downside to this, there's no location on the actual fender for these, so you've got to actually eyeball them all as you get them in and try and get them square. Um, if, if you get one out, I guess we could just slice it off. One other thing I've done is I've put these little um, uh, hooks onto the, onto the mantlet. One, my first criticism of the kit, mantlet goes that way up, it's got a beautiful cast texture on it. Um, sprue connection points, one there, one there on the cast texture they could have put them on the bottom but uh yeah so first criticism of the kit but i'm absolutely loving this thing it's wonderful um i'm going to go on now and add some of this detail to the back of the hull here so we've got the exhausts and the idler carriers i'm not going to put that hook on yet that i made because of that flimsy uh photo etch i don't want to be breaking that off so let's just add the exhaust first and again you can see what they've done here They've given you all the holes, all the bolt holes, so you can drill them out, draw that right through. If you want to portray it with exhaust off in maintenance or whatever, you can. So, um, yeah, really, really thoughtful model, this one. Um, you really could build a beautiful diorama. And yes, I know I keep saying that, but uh, it is true. So there's that exhaust on. You can see how good the fit is. It all just sort of clips into place and then I'm just going to put some glue on it. That's it. Job done. That's in. Um, idler carriers, they're the same, they can go on, run some glue into the seam. 
they need to be fairly strong ish so I'm going to make sure they're well glued in I thought that I had that one upside down but they're both the same so yeah don't be fooled the, the, the bolts they've obviously uh, the tank designers made a common part so on one side the the flange is up the other side the flange is down Whether that's accurate or not, I don't know, but that's the way the kit is. It surprises me actually how little, I've surprised myself how little I know about the Sherman. It's, uh, it's bad really, I should know a lot more. So there we go, that's that step done. Uh, now we're going to move on to the next step, which is adding yet more detail to the same area. And what we're going to do is add these little reblies on here so I'll do one side on camera and do the other side off so we've got let's get that mantle out of the way um, a41 which is a bolt which is here so that's the um, that's the either the mounting bolt or the adjusting bolt for the idler and then we've got a51 a43 and a42 so you've got a51 there a43 and a42 there so we'll get these cleaned up So tweezers is that one cleaned up? Right, so looks like the fatter one is 43 and the thinner one is 42. I've left a sprue nib on there. So that one is going to go that way up into the inner slot like that and then a drop of glue in there give it a little nudge I got a little bit of glue oozed out so I'm just gonna brush that over there we go so these were welded on guys so go around and uh, ferret in with your glue Same with this one, that's going to drop in next to it. And I want to put the hook on first just in case that one being next to it stops you getting to the hook or stops you getting the hook on. Get my soft skinny stick on here because it's all radiused. And then remove that. Clean that up, get rid of the mold seams. And then this hook is going to go on. Look, there's still a mold seam there. Where's my knife gone? Yes, unfortunately, I don't know if anybody saw in the comments when I did my review. I noticed that the, uh, the sprues in this kit, the mold seams are quite um, 
they're quite pronounced it's not the best I've seen and uh, I've seen worse but this, this certainly isn't the best I've seen and uh, Darren who's already built this said um, he looked at my review and he said his kit was nothing like it so maybe I've just been unlucky maybe there's a few out there that have got the flash problem it's hardly a flash problem actually to be honest it's uh, it's just the mold seam it's that bit that some people call burring so that's going to go on there and it's so tight it's just going to want to rip that out so I'll have to leave that until that's cured and fit them on there then so uh, what's next we've got this piece here which I've already cleaned up and that's going to go in the back of there like that okay so drop a glue in there give it something to bite on and just get it so that it's all equal about in the middle there we go that's that in and I'm just going to brush some liquid cement over where I've been sanding to get rid of that furry plastic there we are that's a lovely looking detailed area there now so let me get the rest of this together and I'll come back right here we are then so um I've missed a surface around these joints here I fitted these flanges on the front and put Mr. Surface around them. That's drying now. I've also put some around this seam here, as I think I've already told you. Um, back of the tank is done here. Uh, Mr. Surface around those weld joints. So while that's going off, I've built the sprockets. Here we've got the three different styles of sprockets. And if I hold these closer to the camera, maybe one of you guys can tell me before I go to paint which one I need to use. Because... As I say, I'm not a Sherman file. I don't think it's that one. It's one of these two. So if someone can tell me, then I'll listen to you and use the right one. Um, so yeah, the front fenders are built up, all the gearbox hubs. So moving on now to these bogies. Now this is one I've, I've made earlier, it's complete. And uh, as you can see, as I said in my review, it's kind of a halfway house working suspension. Really, that shock absorber should uh, telescope and then these could move you you could actually move them together so they would kind of go like this and these springs here these horizontal springs would collapse so you would have a movement there so it's not actually a correct working suspension and if you put it on a diorama going over a large log or something it's not going to look good um because it's not right so um really it's kind of I don't know in my opinion it's a bit of a waste of time but um it, it, at least it's got some movement there and it also allows you to have it settled down even on all the wheels you haven't got to try and get everything so that all the wheels are touching so how do these go together these are the parts here to make up three I um, mean you need to make a total of six so you've you've got this uh, the main center mounting point of the actual bogey itself so if we take these parts here you've got one of these which goes on like so I can just put some extra thin in there and then that's glued on there solid there's an ejector pin mark on the front of these that you can sand off or not because it can't really be seen the ejector pin mark is down in there so you can't see it from the outside but um it's on this face here. I'm just going to quickly go over it with a sanding stick just to take it down. There we go. So that's that. Now this little part here goes on the back. And this forms, we need to make sure as well that that area there is nicely sanded flat. And there's no nib left on there because this is actually your mounting onto your, onto your hull. So if you end up um, not having this all right then it won't sit right on the hull so I've actually cut off the tab on that one as you can see and that's where I've used it and I'll show you what I'm talking about now and more experienced models will just laugh but 
the beginners or younger modelers, whatever, need to take note that on this part, you can see there is a, a small tab here there sticking out and that's where the sprue nib is so be careful when you cut it off not to remove that tab which is exactly what I did so um, if you do it's not an issue we were left with there's a small hole there which is on the bottom anyway so but it does uh, give you your alignment so there we go so that's that done so that can go sit there and dry now and then the next part of assembly is actually fitting these you've got these pivot pins in here that fit to these arms um, what I found is this area in here it actually goes on and the bolts face the bolts face outwards that's right so it goes on that way round with the bolts facing outwards and as you can see it doesn't fit very well so what I've done is just with a nice sharp blade is just go in and cut the corner out of there and then it goes in a lot sweeter make sure you get those bolts the right way round and now that sits in there a lot sweeter now so I can just put a dab of extra thin on there and there we go we're away like so so that's on there now nice and solid so that's that done these springs they just slide together you don't glue them so that's that done. Now you need to fit these shock absorbers onto these arms and what you've got basically is you've got the shock absorber here and then you've got this tiny little piece that goes on each end and rather than me try and do them on camera with tweezers and everything I'll show you here it is. Um, here's the assembly so you've got the you've got the shock absorber here and then this tiny little piece goes on the back. Let me show you and that allows it to pivot and you need to make sure you let don't get any glue on that so that it can pivot and make sure you get the shock absorber the right way round as well so um so that's that and then what you do is with this part here probably not dry enough yet but we'll give it a go so what we can do now is we can put the the spring between these like so and hold that together and then we can put those pivots onto there. I know my fingers are in the way guys, it's difficult to show you and hold it all together. But we'll basically want to put that pivot pin on there like that and then that should all stay in place. And then we can put this piece on with the square block downwards like so, hold that together and get a drop of extra thin in the middle only and make sure it doesn't go on the pivots and just hold that together and let it lock off and there we go that's that done so there's one assembly built before your very eyes Right now I've brought you in close just for this little part here. Now we talked about these um, shock absorbers and these two tiny little parts. I've decided I will show you how I do it because it's um, it's something I've picked up over the years and it's you know it's like a little tip that maybe younger and newer modelers won't think of. Um, so what I'm going to do basically is glue these on without those. So I'm going to put a drop of glue in there. Okay. Then I'm going to pick up my part and just stick it in there like that. Okay, so now that's stuck in there now with Tammy Extra Thin. And then I'm going to pull it apart like so. So it's actually pulled out. And now what I can do is take my arm, not my arm, the kit's arm. Well, I'm using both my arms, but you know. So I can put that in like that now and then just push that together and that will hold. But the, the glue won't be enough. And if I go put an extra thin in there, the chances are it's going to capillary into the pivot and it won't swing. So I'm going to take a drop of super glue, thin super glue, and just touch it where the where the part meets. And it will also act as a filler. Not that it matters because it's on the back and it won't be seen. But now that will have the effect of kind of 
locking it in. So now straight away you can move to the other side and do the same. So take some extra thin, put it in there. Sorry for putting my arm across the camera. I've got the glue on the wrong side of the bench for filming. Whoops, I dropped it. If you're not too quick with this, the glue will go off and it won't work. So I may have that problem now. And this really is playing up because the camera's on. I know it is. Wow, <laughs> that took some doing. Okay, so, and it's not a square peg in a round hole either. They fit beautifully. So like pretty much all of this kit. So just pull that apart. I can put this swinging arm in there now. Like so, and just squeeze it together like that. That super glue's got me on that side. Sorry about my fingernails, guys. I know they're disgusting, but I can't do this with gloves on. And um, so it's either disgusting fingernails or no videos at all. But I am, as my regular followers will know, I'm tr I keep trying to grow them. Look at this. This is the first one that's played up. Isn't that ironic? There we go. So I'll just squeeze that together now. Let that super glue take hold. But this kit, it's the, the detail on these parts is absolutely stunning. There's no ejector pin marks in these, if you notice. You know, it's um, really, really nice. Really, really nice model. And an enjoyable build. But um, <clears throat> I don't know if it's doing anything for my mojo at the moment, but uh, it's certainly quite frustrating at times with things like that when you've got the camera on. So um, I'll get all these put together now and then we can look at getting the bogeys onto the hull. They're all built now, as you can see, and the keen eyed amongst you will notice that on a couple of them I've turned the springs around because um, I put the springs the wrong way around. It appears all the pictures I can find on the internet, they're always like that with the, the spring facing outward pointing to the right, whether they be on the left or the right hand side. <clears throat> Funnily enough, the only image I found with the spring the other way around pointing to the left was a uh, taken out of the um, one of the TM manuals for the period uh, and it showed the, the spring face in the other way. So I'm going with this. Every picture I've seen, they will face that way. I'd, I'd be interested to know in the comments if you know, if you know your Shermans, if that's actually correct. I mean, maybe they could have put, be put in either way. They probably were just thrown back in either way in the field, but obviously out of the factory, they probably uh, had an assembly process that put them the same. So anyway, let's look at getting these onto the uh, tank now. Now, what I want to make sure, first of all, is I've got no little lumps or bumps on here or anything that's going to interfere with them going on nice and straight. Now, you can see that there I've got some glue has come through on the back, so I've got a finger mark. Now, obviously, as soon as I put more glue on it, that will melt and disappear, but still, we want to make sure that we're all good to go and all nice and clean. I'm not sure how long this video is. It must be nearly an hour by now, at least, I would have thought. But uh, as I said, if this video goes out at all, it means I finished the build and this will be the complete build, not the paint, the build. So that's going to fit in there like so. And straight away, I can see we've got an issue with it not wanting to go down in there. Now, will it fit better on this one? Yes. So we may have a slight issue with a ridge on there. So I'm just going to, with my extra thin, go around, plenty of glue, make sure it's a nice solid joint. There we go. I'm just going to glue those in like that. Plenty of glue in that joint. Make sure that's just going to sit in there nice and solid. Now, whether I'll go under here with, with some Mr. Surfacer and smooth that joint out or not, I don't know. It is underneath, but uh, as anybody who follows me, you'll know I'm quite fussy. Um, <clears throat> and also, the other thing I'm noticing, are they upside down? Nope, the flat does go to the top. Oh, I guess that's so the tracks didn't hit them, I suppose. Um, 
there we go. Now let's have a look at this rear one again, or front one should I say. And that one's having an issue as well. So we've probably got to just shave some plastic from here. It looks like there's a bit of a seam line on there. So just shave some plastic from there and that should help. all going together now so once again plenty of extra thin in there brush it around that will stay in position then And then finally on this side, we'll get this one on and then I'll uh, do the other side off camera. That's not going together there, is it? Whoops. Just needs a bit of persuasion. No, it needs to be... Again, we've got an issue there. So obviously... We need to exercise more care in the hull assembly in making sure that these pads are level with the outer hull because you can see the, the outer hull wall is forming the first part and then you've got the, the floor is forming the other. So you need to make sure that you've got it all nice and square and level. Although actually saying that, the it's the whole side that's preventing it going together, so whatever. And there we go, and I'm going to get a straight edge. And just see if I can get... Yep, they all fall, they're all falling in, so that's nice. I've also checked the these pivots. We've got these wheel pivots here, A11. It says not to glue them. I've checked the fit. I wanted to see if we're going to end up with wonky wheels. And here's a couple of my cut off the sprue. And they fit in there beautifully. There is a little bit of play, as you can see. Um, but they actually press into the wheels as well. So I won't be putting the wheels on here until after I've painted it. Um, because I want to paint the wheels separately and paint the tyres and everything. So basically it looks like you can, you'll be able to, once, it's, once your wheels are painted and it's all painted, you'll be able to just push these on and squeeze together and that's it, your wheels are on. And uh, I won't be fitting any of these um, uh, return rollers either on here because, uh, because I want to paint them separately as well and then glue them on after it's painted. So um, I'll go on and get the other side done and then I'll uh, come back with something else. Right, wheel time. So I've got all the wheels off the sprue here. These are the main wheels that go on the bottom. All of these bogies are on now and it's all uh, nice and level and everything's all pivoting lovely. So that's all cool. Looks like a couple of them have got some glue on them somehow. I don't know how, how I've done that, but uh, they're just a bit sticky, that's all. They're, they're absolutely fine. I'm not going to be playing with this. So there we go, that's that done. So we've got these wheels and they've got a fairly prominent seam on them um, here's one that isn't touched and you can see there there's quite a prominent seam on there now if you've seen my review you'll know that my kit does have some pretty heavy seam lining um, all over it uh, Darren Hedges who's the person who suggested getting this kit he said his was absolutely fine so this may just be mine so we need to get rid of that seam so what we can do is take a, a sanding stick like this one this is about uh, I don't know 300 grit or something like that and then we can go around and sand like this staying at 45 degrees and sort of going up and across and keep turning the wheel and just go like that until you basically get rid of that line or what you can do is take one of these this is the little Tamiya handy drill this is it comes as a kit you build it yourself there's a few videos on YouTube on how to build it but you'll uh, you'll work it out yourself it's brilliant because it's slow. You can see it's not very fast. If you get something like this, like a little windy drill, it's really too fast and you may start to tear the plastic because you, 
you don't want to be using really really fine um, grit here because it'll just clog up if you go too fast and if you use coarse grit it'll just melt the plastic so better off with something like this which is fairly slow what I've got in here is a 1.5 mil drill in the chuck backwards so the, the actual drill head is in and then what I can do is just slot this on there push the wheel on get some tight and make sure the wheel is is running you don't want it all wonky because you'll end up producing that wonkiness then what I'm going to do is just with a pen just put a black line around the middle there so I can see what I'm doing and then come along with a fairly coarse sand I mean this is like a 180 grit I guess and then I can just rub away on there and you can see that it's taking the wheel is actually like a it's got a, um, a concave form in it I just put it on there and just keep going until all of the black pen disappears. And there we go. You can see it's starting to go. Figuring that if you have a lathe, you could always use a lathe to do it. And there we go. We've got a. Now we've got what looks like a nicely worn tyre. Now if you, if you want a smoother finish, just come along with a smoother stick and just go like that. Now I tend not to radius the edges. I like to get a, have a really square edge on the tyre because that's how they would have worn. And I'll probably go around and cut a few little chunks out of them as well because quite often they were uh, quite beat up. So there we go. That's the wheel. You can see the difference there. There's the, the part as it comes out of the box and there's your uh, there's your wheel sanded and then if you want to go over it again you can just go to get rid of all those grooves or whatever but you know it's uh, it's going to look really really nice when it's got a coat of paint on it because of that nice sharp edge and the very square flat face. Right so all these wheels are sanded now I've put those together to make sure they were true I got a, a shaft the right size it's actually a 3 16 bore in there 2.35 slid that through there and then glued them that keeps them nice and square now for these small bitume rollers here you've got a tiny little pin on here and a tiny hole in there and then you glue them together like so so I'm going to get some Tamiya quick setting in there and I'll give you a little tip on how to make sure these are true now you can roll them along the table like that and then just watch them go around and pinch them you know I'll make them go out if you can see if they're out like that you can just bring them back square and just do that or what you can do if you quick get them all together like so last one I've also noticed this this Sherman has no spare wheels on it so I was looking for the tires to um to sort of half take the seam off because new tires would have a seam on them so I was going to leave half the seam on there, but um, it has no spare, so I'll have to dig through my spares box because I think Easy 8s pretty normally had spare wheels. So you can get two steel blocks like that, squeeze them together, and that guarantees they'll all stay nice and true. And then when I roll them down the bench, you'll see they're all they're all nice and uh, parallel. Okay. So I know you guys love my little tips. So if you are an experienced modeler and you think I'm trying to teach you how to suck eggs, I'm sorry, but a lot of the uh, newer, younger modelers love these little kind of tips. And it just helps you to end up with a better model at the end of the day. So um, yeah, if you don't have those steel blocks, you can use anything that's square. Um, you know, you could use your, your glue bottles like so, together like that. Okay, so you know, your Tamiya Extra Thin bottles will do the same job. So yeah, any old, any old thing you've got that's square, you just push them together and uh, make sure they're square. And you could in fact do the same with these. I mean, you could put them like that and then um, put one at each end. Like that, just give them a squeeze and that'll make sure they're nice and uh, parallel. You can't do one because obviously if you do one, you might be like this, exaggerated. So you want to make sure you've got at least two and then you can squeeze them together and, and get them in parallel. Okay. Okay, moved on quite a bit here now. Uh, got the tracks together. Um, just one thing, when I built the tracks, it tells you in the instructions, 76 links. It is 76 links, but when you actually build them 
when you assemble them ready to go on, obviously 75 links because the 76th you need to put in. Uh, 77 is too long. You end up with your, your um, idlers being pulled back a long way. So with 76 links, the idlers are basically sitting uh, vertically on the, um, on the pivot there because you've got this part here, this A35 goes in and obviously that swivels back to tension the track. Now I've only just put these tracks together so I'm not going to pull them too tight but um, basically uh, they, you, you can, you know, if you want to paint everything and then assemble it after painting you can get it all apart as I'll show you here now. You can just put the sprockets, the, the tracks onto the sprockets and then and onto the idler and it will come off like so. You just pull the tracks up over the wheels Pull the front sprocket off and there we go it does just come off just like that and because the tracks are so flexible and so uh, so I don't know the word for it but there you can see there they're very very um, easy to, to work with so um so that's that and basically all I did to assemble them was put them in the jig the jig that I cut up if you looked at my track assembly video put them in the jig like that, put them together, and then the uh, job done. So um, that's those, and I've done both sides now. And again, I need to know which sprockets I need to use. So basically that's it. The wheels are all just sort of clipped into place, so they'll all come off. Uh, I've gone round the turret with some Mr. Surface, with some alcohol, and uh, removed the Mr. Surfacer. Just go round with a cotton bud with some alcohol on it and just rub away and you end up leaving the uh, the cast texture on there without sanding it away and that seam line I'm going to leave like that um, again maybe you guys can tell me before I start painting this you know what should that seam line look like so tracks are done uh, wheels are all done so oh, I've put the um, the front of the hull on I've gone around here with the alcohol and cleaned off the Mr. Surfacer around these brackets fitted these little um, clamp things or whatever they are these little hooks so yeah we're we're, uh, we're really getting there now on the home run so take the track off of this side which is easy to do and i was going to show you those pivots wasn't i so let me just get that off of there and then you've got this part here you see on the back this is your your part a35 i think it is a55 no a a35 yeah so that goes on like that and then that'll swivel round so you can tension your tracks so yeah don't fit that don't glue it um, until everything's all done but there's there's enough of a, a, a fit in there that they actually go in and stay there so that's that all done um, on both the tracks are the same length by the way and then the wheels they just um, they will just unclip like that so they're a doddle so it's going to be really easy to be able to paint this and basically strip it down or paint it all separately and then assemble it all at the end. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be nice. Um, so now we need to look at actually getting this hole fitted. Now, when you look at the way they build this in here, they actually build the complete upper hull. Um, they build the complete up hole and then fit it to the tank. Now obviously this fit of this part here is more important than the fit of the hole. The fit to the lower hole should I say and I have noticed that the rear of the hull is a bit wider. You can see where it goes in these slots. It needs to be pulled in so I'm tempted to sort of clip that onto there and fit this engine deck and see how it all looks. The fit at the front is just beautiful as you can see there. It's, it's perfect um, and then these go in and they fit beautifully into here like so they just stay there on their own so that's uh, that's a good thing and um, yeah so far the whole thing is just basically falling together it is it is Tamiya like so let me get this hull all sort of clipped on and stuff and then uh, we'll look at fitting that engine deck Right, moving along, a uh, lot to talk about in this segment. So, what have I done? Let's start with the hull. Uh, I've actually, you can see here, taped the hull together at the back to keep it the right spread. And then I've 
glued in the engine cover panels and you can also see here see here I've made the uh, handles out of 0.5 brass wire um, I've done that purely because as you remember from my review this kit my version of the kit has got some not very nice seam lines so easier to make those than to try and clean up the seam lines and keep the handles looking round and everything I've also made those handles there they're not glued in yet because I want to make sure they're all exactly the same level and all parallel and everything so once all this has gone off I can take it apart slip some plastic wire under there to make sure they're all exactly the same height and then dab a super glue in behind that's them in place so that's that done um, I've also pushed on with the turret um, and the gun the gun barrel doesn't need to be glued in which is handy because again on my version my sprue C not only has it got some seam lines it's got some mismatch so my actual although it's a one piece barrel which is great um, looking at it end on mine's like this so I've had to sand it round it's not perfectly cylindrical um, I don't know if I'm going to stick with it or not but at least we don't need to glue it in if, it, if the model turns out really nice once painted and weathered and everything maybe I'll invest in an aftermarket barrel for it we'll see um, so or even make one myself on the lathe actually so uh, the other thing I found is the actual tub whether this is the kit design or it's my fault I don't know but the actual tub you can see it's too narrow there's a gap down either side so I've cut some pieces of sprue and I can just put them in there once we're all glued up and, uh, and the top's going on and that'll hold that up and I can get some glue down in there and seal those seams up so that's uh, that's uh, another little tip going forward um, and just to let you know in case you're wondering they are 44 millimeters long and also the other one how accurate is my sanding look at that 0.08 difference so not bad what's that 0.08 that's 3000 that's not bad for sanded sprue um, so there we go so that's that the holes not the top of the hull isn't glued to the bottom yet I won't do that until after I've done a load of painting work uh, so yeah you can see the turret here is all done we've got the um, this hatch here which isn't glued down we've also got the cover over the uh, periscope there I put some black magic marker over the back of the periscope so that it doesn't show through the tan plastic once it's all painted um, I've Put, added these little clips on the back which I don't know what they're for but they're obviously for some sort of stowage aerial there I've drilled a 0.4 hole on the end of it so I can put something in there to reflect an aerial um, hooks on the side here I've used the kit parts and I don't know if you can see close up they've got a bit of a seam on them which needs to be cleaned out my advice is always do the seam after you've glued it on and that way it's a lot easier to save you trying to hold it you can just go over there with a sanding stick after the glue source hard and solid and that's easy then go over it with some um, tabby extra thin and that'll just clean it all up we've got that mount on the back there I guess that's another antenna um, or something like that <laughs> I don't know and then uh, yeah this little thing on here I don't know what that is it's some sort of little bottle with fins on it so yeah it's all looking quite nice so in the uh, little hatch on the side there so yeah lovely um, the cupola cupola whatever you want to call it I always call it a cupola um, that, that comes with this part like that and then you've got all these separate little glasses that go in and that sort of holds the glasses in so not going to glue that together yet until after it's painted can't fit that to the turret because once that's on you won't get that ring in from behind so that'll all be painted separately um, and I won't take the clear parts off the sprue until that's done remember guys I need to know please are these bits of glass supposed to be green they're showing them green here are they supposed to be green or are they supposed to be just clear or black or whatever um, and I think that is about that for now but we are really on the home run and I think we're probably you know just a few hours now from being finished a few hours for me a few minutes for you um, nothing really much to talk about in what I've done so far just be aware of that uh, rear hull being pulled apart um, and we'll go from there so I'll see you again in a sec right moving along still pushing forward um, this is this model is not a model to be doing to rebuild your mojo because now we're at the stage where we're putting all these tiny parts on and there are hundreds of tiny tiny parts like these two little brackets here you've got this little horn assembly here with the with the that's two parts and you've got these little tiny hooks and then there's these mirrors these mirrors here that's you've got the actual mirror 
and you get the shaft and then on the bottom there's a tiny little photo etched bracket you can see which is folded up to mount onto the front so that's those two made um, there and there and then well, you've seen the pin tool then we've got these little tiny headlamp units that's one piece but it's absolutely tiny and if I put them on there they'll get broken off we've got the machine gun here which which moves around with some careful assembly so uh, that's going to go in the front but that will get broken off and we've got these lovely little um, hatches with the uh, with the periscopes in them and the guards over the top and the little plate behind the periscope and you can see I've made the brass handle as well on there so that's another couple of parts there um, when it comes to the actual main hull this rear plate on my certainly on my kit it took some uh, manipulation to get it to fit so in the instructions they actually tell you to um, here we go you've got the rear plate there and they tell you to add this panel here and then add these little photo etch parts here add the uh, barrel cleaning rods there and then actually install it once all that is on there well my advice is put it on beforehand because I've had to do some pretty heavy pulling around and, and like super glue to lock it in place and then loads of uh, extra thin to weld it in and then obviously you can see that I've got tape holding it in and round here we've got a weld joint which is provided in the kit so what I'll do if we've got any seams there I'll just scratch the glue out go around some Mr Surface or a bit of alcohol and uh, that'll be that weld seam sorted I can see that I've managed to dislodge that plate there so I better just glue that one back in making sure the tape is nowhere near it because if the tape if the glue gets near the tape it'll capillary under it so just stick that down that's another piece of advice perhaps leave leave these parts these parts are do, 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 they, they tell you to fit them a39 they tell you to fit them all the way back here probably best to put them on once the uh, rear panel is on because then you've got something to actually stick it to so um yeah there's a couple of little errors in the instructions i think it could have been better thought out but um you know it's it's not as bad as that kitty hawk bronco i'm building but uh yeah it's worth looking through the instructions it's like you know they've got you putting all the detail on the hull and everything on the uh, turret sorry before you even get the two turret halves glued together so you know it's worth just looking through the instructions and make some mental notes on you know come up with your own build sequence or just you know if you're a bit unsure and confident whatever then follow me but those bits of sprue in there they help greatly so now the, the the hull will go together like that and as you can see now we've got a nice seam free joint in there and it all fits together beautifully so um there we go um it's going to get to the point where i'm going to glue the hull together and then I think what I'll do is just put all these parts on when it's all together and then I won't be handling it too much but certainly now if I put those parts on you know if I put that machine gun in now what's happened here I was got a bit of glue on it a bit. if I put those parts in now the machine gun and then I do this with the hole while I'm working on the back you know you can see straight away what's going to happen so uh, I think we'll leave that until after I've glued them as well the way I do that is simply get a piece of plastic strip let me show you here we go I just got a piece of plastic strip out of my scrap box what is it a millimeter thick 0.8 millimeters thick and all I've done is put that under there okay and then push down hold them in place and then glue them in from behind and then give it a couple of minutes and then just slide that out and then you can see they're all the nice same height and everything then and, uh, and level Whereas if you just, when they're that close together, they need to be, you don't want them looking all higgledy piggledy. Although on the real thing, they probably uh, are. But, uh, yeah, best to have them looking a bit nicer. And then what I need to do is put some super glue on from the outside to simulate the, the weld where they would have been welded on. So um, that's that for now, folks. And I'm going to go and do something else. But this video will keep running. So when you next see me, it'll be maybe another day. Um, but... Um, for you it'll be a few seconds right then guys it's actually been uh, a couple of days <clears throat> and a good couple of hours work i think um if you're a beginner avoid this model um it's not meant for you 
get the Tamiya one instead, the latest Tamiya one. Um, I, don't, I don't remember the kit numbers, but basically it's the Easy 8. One of the versions I know has got the red sort of face on the front, the Korean War one. Um, get that one, it'll go together a lot easier. This kit, the fit is lovely, everything goes together, the tracks are quite fiddly, but I enjoy that sort of stuff. Um, all the wheels are lovely and the details are lovely and everything. But then when you come along to parts like, like this here, where we've got this rear panel, um, where is it here? Okay, this is it back here. This drove me absolutely around the bend. You've got these hinges that go on the top here, okay, which is absolutely fine. And then you've got this panel which is going on and just glues on with those hinges and sits on those two legs there. Then you've got the option of having this out with the arms there so it sort of sits like it is on the next page, like this. So you've got the shelf, or you can have it folded up. If you have it folded up, if you notice, they tell you to put these wing nuts in here, and then when you get to there, they're not there. So, I don't know. Um, if you do it like this with it down, okay, which is what I wanted to do and I did originally, you have these two arms on the side which are have no location, um, they're photo etch and they could have easily made that in one piece but no they had to make it in two and the joints here where it connects onto these hinges is literally just, well it's, it's that, that's it, in three locations so as soon as you touch it, it breaks, um, the arms bend, they, they snap off, whatever really really lost my wit with it I, I must have touched it three or four times and it just broke the glue joint because the glue joint is so tiny and the tiny little photo etch straps where have i put them they're in here for tweezers um no, that's a mirror here's one here and you can see what's happened to that one as soon as you as soon as you touch it they just buckle up so they could have easily made that in one piece um, slightly thicker you know maybe thicker photo etch and they could have easily put some kind of joint if if you are watching uh, Ryfield I suggest that on any subsequent models you do perhaps have the option of having these two pieces separately if you want to have it folded up um, or just make you know make a molding that's folded up and then make a one piece molding that's folded out so at least you've got a solid joint and for God's sake make these as one piece and if you want to make it as folded make it as another piece so have a, a V shape there and have one piece there instead of having to join them together it sticks out the back of the tank it's going to get knocked it's going to get touched and it is so so flimsy you know it's a very very poor design in my opinion um, so now I'm starting to look at these guards around the front and I haven't fit the headlight yet so I won't be putting them on but I'm going to do this one which is the one that goes around the, the horn at the front. Now I've got the pieces off here and I was going to show you about how I make them. Um, so we need to roll this up so I've got a, this is like a, a two and a half mil steel shaft so I can just roll that like that keeping it square. And it will basically it will start to come around on itself being careful not to go past those those outriggers because you don't want to make the whole thing around you only want to make the top section of it in other words you're making an inverted u obviously rather than a uh, rather than a circle there we go so that's that rolled up like that and you can see there you get the, the lovely radius shape on it now that needs to come round a bit more on this side. So I'm just going to go a bit further with that one. And then what we'll do, we'll get this frame glued in, which is going to be fun. Funny enough, there's no plastic option for this one. All the other guards have a plastic option and they are actually quite thick. But for this one, there is no plastic option, which is strange. Now this piece here is going to go in across the front, so I want this photo which is extremely thin. Okay, so finally we come to the last segment of this build, and um, I've assembled the machine gun, and it is a lovely little machine gun as you can see there. It's got lots and lots of detail on it. You get the option to have the um, the ammo in the top, or you can just have an empty ammo box. 
and you also get an option to have a barrel with or without this uh, but it all moves and it goes on so let's put it on the turret and see how it looks so that's going to slide in there like so or is it not maybe the hole's not big enough oh yes yeah, a bit of a tight fit so there we go I haven't glued the barrel as you can see so yeah it's um, positionable and you can turn it and everything so that's pretty cool now one word of warning if you're building this model um, like normally with these kits you have a bayonet system where you have a couple of slots so you put it in turn it and it take it take the turret out with this one you have these clips that you glued in earlier so if you just clip it in you'll never get it out again so my suggestion is to bend one of the clips in so that it just goes in and then you can you can pull it out again okay so um, yeah a little tip for you there guys if you're uh, if you're new to the hobby or even just don't think of it and clip oh no what am I gonna do you can't get a turret out again so um so there we go that is it guys all that photo etch on the front is done let's give you a close-up of that there we go you can see those brackets on there and um, you can see there's some pencil lead on there that was to try and highlight the little marks where it's supposed to go I really wish I don't know why they didn't just put some very small slots molded into the um, into the glasses plate so that you could actually just had location for them because they are literally just glued you know surface to surface one touch and they'll probably just fall off so um yeah i was loving this kit at the start really really enjoying it goes together beautifully a couple of tiny little issues but hey it's modeling um but then towards the end it became very very tedious with all these hundreds of tiny little parts going on um and all the scene cleanup was getting on my nerves as well but that it sounds like that might just be a few examples that may, may just be mine um yeah and the photo etch and that is so thin it's not easy to work with and stuff that and it's it's quite annoying it's like they go to the trouble here let me show you on here on this cupola this little bracket here if you can see it where i'm pointing the end of the tweezers is there's a little photo etch bracket that you bend up and then there's this tiny little clamp that glues into the cupola and, and you can see it there yeah it's crazy and yet the handle for locking the gun is molded in situ with the shaft of the gun and well it's supposed to be mine must have been snapped off in the sprue in the bag because I haven't got one so you know they go to all that trouble of these tiny tiny little parts that you have to bend and everything and then that is just one lump of plastic so I, I don't know it's my first wife fill model will it by my last I don't know um, and this if you remember I was talking about this rear end this this was a joke absolute joke that was abs that absolutely had me pulling my hair out um, if you are watching my field model you need to change that and give us some location where this door is open and it butts up against those hinges you know just just perhaps a, even a little flange or something like you've got on these hinges here just to give it some surface area because basically it is it is literally corner to corner it's like if you can imagine this is the corner of this you know you're looking at it like that down there and literally it is like that it's not like that it's not like that it's literally corner to corner in three areas about two millimeters long so as soon as you touch it it just breaks so yeah not not good poor design here, I think um, so I've, I've ended up putting mine up and because the brackets got all bent up I'm just not bothered putting them on so um, there we go I haven't fitted the tracks to the sides because um, I want to paint it all weather all and then fit them uh, but pretty much everything else is done you do get in the kit if you didn't see my review you do get whoops, <laughs> you do get a lot of parts like for the inside of um, for the inside of the hull and the inside of um, hatches and stuff like here you get all these details for the inside of the hatches like this and then if you go up to here um, when you start looking at here you get the detail for the inside of all these hatches and everything you get all this detail inside here and it's crazy because the hull is completely empty so obviously there's going to be a, um, a, 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 a with interior kit coming this is that rear assembly here um, and there it is there you can see that is li literally just butts up on there there's no location whatsoever so uh, yeah it's um it's not good not good at all so there we go guys that is the build of Rifle models Sherman Easy 8 and as you saw in the beginning of the video I've had it all there with the tracks on and everything 
and um, so you've seen it as a finished built up model I'm not going to put it all back together now just for that so uh, thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it please give me a like please subscribe and um, anything you want to say leave a comment down below and if you want to follow me on my patreon um, that's a, that's there as well that's in, in the link down below and uh, thanks for all your comments thanks for your subscriptions and thanks for all your support um, has my mojo come back <laughs> I don't know this this kit is not a mojo builder it's more of a mojo breaker and how I've stuck with it I do not know all those hundreds and hundreds of tiny little parts that just rawr, just cut off the sprue clean up the seam glue it on cut off the sprue clean up the seam glue it on and um, yeah not good so um not good for me anyway so I'll see you all soon thanks for watching bye for now